The Theory of Political Economy by William Stanley Jevons. Chapter 5 Theory of Labor. Part 1 Definition of Labor. Adam Smith said, The real price of everything, what everything really costs, to the man who wants to acquire it, is the toil and trouble of acquiring it. Labor was the first price, the original purchase money, that was paid for all things. If subjected to a very searching analysis, this celebrated passage might not prove to be so entirely true as it would at first sight seem to most readers to be. Yet it is substantially true and luminously expresses the fact that labor is the beginning of the process treated by economists, as consumption is the end and purpose. Labor is the painful exertion which we undergo to ward off pains of greater amount, or to procure pleasures which leave a balance in our favor. Corcel, Seniel, and Hearn have stated the problem of economics with the utmost truth and brevity, in saying that it is to satisfy our wants with the least possible sum of labor. In defining labor for the purposes of the economist, we have a choice between two courses. In the first place, we may, if we like, include it in all exertion of body or mind. A game of cricket would, in this case, be labor, but if it be undertaken solely for the sake of the enjoyment attaching to it, the question arises whether we need to take it under our notice. All exertion not directed to a distant and distinct end must be repaid simultaneously. There is no account of good or evil to be balanced at a future time. We are not prevented in any way from including such cases in our theory of economics. In fact, our theory of labor will of necessity apply to them. But we need not occupy our attention by cases which demand no calculus. When we exert ourselves for the sole amusement of the moment, there is but one rule needed, namely to stop when we feel inclined, when the pleasure no longer equals the pain. It will probably be better, therefore, to take the second course and concentrate our attention on such exertion, as is not completely repaid by the immediate result. This would give us a definition nearly the same as that of Say, who defined labor as followed action directed towards a goal. Labor, I should say, is any painful exertion of mind or body undergone partly or wholly with the view of future good. It is true that labor may be both agreeable at the time and conducive to future good. But it is only agreeable in a limited amount, and most men are compelled by their wants to exert themselves longer and more severely than they would otherwise do. When a laborer is inclined to stop, he clearly feels something that is irksome, and our theory will only involve the point where the exertion has become so painful as to nearly balance all other considerations. Whatever there is that is wholesome or agreeable about labor before it reaches this point may be taken as a net profit of good to the laborer, but it does not enter into the problem. It is only when labor becomes effort that we take account of it, and, as Hearn truly says, such effort, as the very term seems to imply, is more or less troublesome. In fact, we must, as will shortly appear, measure labor by the amount of pain which attaches to it.